Hey Taurus, happy 2022, happy new year. I do hope that this video finds you well and in good spirits. There's actually quite a bit happening with your sign this month. Your ruling planet Venus is retrograde in the sign of Capricorn. We also have the North Node entering into your sign, so that's really, really exciting. You're basically becoming one of the main characters in 2022. There's a lot of focus on you in particular, and uh, yeah, there's a lot of you really stepping into yourself. Before we get too far into that, however, I just want to give a couple of quick announcements. I do apologize that these videos are coming out a little bit late. I've actually been working on year-ahead horoscopes, so horoscopes for 2022 have been posted for all 12 signs on my blog that you can find in the description box down below. I am also running a sale. Uh, all of my services are 15% off, and I'm going to be also uploading all of those horoscopes as um, uh, short videos over the next couple of weeks, so keep your eyes open for those. I definitely put a lot of time into that, and it, it actually is part of the reason why I'm so late here. I do apologize. I thank you for all of your patience and understanding with me. Um, there really is like just a lot this month that is very choppy in general with Mercury in its pre-shadow phase and going retrograde on the 14th. Um, there's also Venus again being retrograde. There's a lot of energy with Capricorn where it's like we want things to be running smoother than they are. And we almost have to let go of control. We just have to handle things as they arise. That's sort of the vibe for this month, to be honest. Um, and for you in particular, I have all of your cards already drawn. Um, the first card that actually came out was this Queen of Swords. And this is a very independent energy. And it's actually interesting that this is showing up to me um, kind of in the past, because it feels like this is actually your energy coming into the month. And I, I'm thinking of you specifically. Could also be talking about Libra energy uh, or an air sign, Gemini, Aquarius. But I, I actually feel like this is more about you. And when I see the Queen of Swords, this is sometimes a person who has gone through a breakup or some sort of heartache and maybe being a bit, um, a bit closed off to people, actually, just being honest. Um, but I, I don't even get that sense of like bitterness or anger or hostility. It's just like you're in your own energy. It's like... I wonder if a lot of you have gone through, uh, you know, relationships that have ended, especially around Scorpio season, which was October, November, uh, or, or ending relationships around that time, um, or, or just something happening in relationship. That, that's coming to mind because we have the North Node entering into your sign as well as the South Node entering into Scorpio. And for a lot of you, if you've been acting like a different person to be in relationships with other people or making a lot of compromises, I'm just feeling like that's something that has shifted for you. Um, we did also have, uh, what was it? We had the full moon in your sign that was the first eclipse beginning this cycle. And it really felt like a new chapter for you, ending one self and stepping into another. There's, there's a lot of things with transformation this year. Um, and I actually think that was kind of a th theme for you in 2022. I, I believe I wrote that I think it was you I gave butterfly to because I gave all of the zodiac signs an animal and it was like this transformation. And if that's not for the year, then it's definitely for this month. It feels like there's sort of this transformation. You're, you're going inside of yourself, letting go of who you were and becoming who you were meant to be. Um, especially if you're familiar with that process, the caterpillar will actually dissolve inside of its chrysalis. And that's kind of what I'm getting with this queen of swords. It's like, you're guarding your heart. You're going within. You're, you're not necessarily super open with people right now. You are focused very much on your own happiness and what makes you happy. And maybe there was just this, this, uh, this focus before on making other people happy and thinking that was going to make you happy in some way. And you're no longer able to make those compromises anymore. And that's actually quite clear to you with this Ace of Swords. And I feel like you're now putting your energy towards you in a really healthy and beautiful way. And even though retrogrades can be challenging, sometimes it really is like a time to breathe, especially when the outer planets go retrograde. So things like Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, Pluto, when they go retrograde, it's actually almost like taking some time to just slow down, shift gears. Um, but for you with your ruling planet being Venus, the way it's actually kind of feeling is like things are just shifting gears. You're catching your breath 
And with that actually makes sense because Capricorn is um, an earth sign. It is very comfortable for you. And there is kind of this focus on like, I, I almost wonder with like Venus retrograde in Capricorn, if that's kind of like bringing up stuff with like student debt. I know that's something that's going to be resuming potentially or is set to resume in the United States in February. So maybe there's something focused on finances there. Um, there's just this thing with like investing in your own learning and where you want to go. And I feel like a lot of people are having a hard time with you this month. Um, <laughs> with this two of swords, you're, you're kind of this queen of swords, or I'm sorry, this two of cups. You're kind of this queen of swords. Maybe you do feel like a two of swords to other people kind of, uh, deadlocked or, um, not really cooperating with other people. But I think what really is happening for you, Taurus, is that you're no longer just compromising and, and being a people pleaser anymore. If that is a tendency that you struggle with, that is not something that you're going to be doing. And it feels like because of that, it's, it's kind of challenging the people around you who are used to you being a people pleaser, who are used to you accommodating to them. You're now creating space for yourself. And with this Knight of Pentacles energy in the future, it's like you are slowly and steadily building towards something and creating things that are satisfying to you specifically. Um, and, and there really is quite a bit of stuff that's happening with um, Venus this month. There's actually quite a be few beautiful aspects. We have a Kazemi with the Sun and Venus that's happening on the 8th. That is a conjunction that's very, very close. Um, it's super tight, and it's bringing a lot of blessings potentially, um, and also learning and reflection, because again, Venus is still retrograde and will be retrograde pretty much the entire month. Um, we also do have Venus forming um, uh, a trine with Uranus on the 25th. Um, actually, looking at my notes right here, it's going to be forming a sextile with Neptune in Pisces on January 5th. There really is like this beautiful, dreamy energy. And, you know, you've had Uranus in your sign for the past couple of years, and it's going to be there until 2026. It really is changing the way that you think about yourself, the way you present. And that could be bringing some tremors with the people around you. Maybe they don't quite understand what's going on for you. But I feel like this is actually very healthy, just being honest. And I know when people look at the Queen of Swords, it's sometimes like she's not dealing with these unresolved issues and pain. Maybe that does apply to you. I think that applies to everyone to some degree anyways. But I, I think this actually feels very necessary and needed this month, especially with the Nine of Cups being your lesson or, or being kind of your advice. Um, it, it's what you've been learning about, and it's, you've been learning about needing to make yourself happy and making your own wishes come true. And that might come at the cost of harmony um, or, like, I guess, peace, quote-unquote, between you and another person. But to me... If peace means giving up parts of yourself or peace means not addressing certain things or not saying certain things, then it's not peace. It, it's passivity. And there's a huge difference there. Um, and this Knight of Pentacles, it's like you're just focusing on yourself. You're focusing on the things that make you feel good. And it, it's very earnest. It's not necessarily about you like trying to be aggressive. You're just taking care of things. You're, you're doing what feels good to you. I do want to pull some animal cards for you as well. I actually forgot to pull those at the start here. I'm really, really curious to see what we have for you. Mm, that's too many. Let's try again. What is the animal wisdom? Ooh. Okay. Steck has a lot to say, apparently. I love this. <laughs> Remember how I was talking about butterfly earlier? That's the first card that came out right here. So this butterfly energy, this transformation, you are going through a transformation right now, and it is changing your heart in a lot of ways. Um, and I also have the dragon, which is the solar plexus card. This is your sense of self. Your sense of self really is going through major transformation. You're coming back in touch with this inner fire and passion and conviction. And I just feel... I feel really good about the direction you're going in, Taurus, and it might not make other people happy. And frankly, I just don't feel like you're that concerned about it either. <laughs> Maybe there is part of you that feels unsettled, but it's like, 
you know what you need to do to make yourself happy. And you are changing things. You are reviewing a lot of things with Venus being retrograde. And Mercury is also going retrograde as well. Mercury is going to be going retrograde in Aquarius and eventually back into Capricorn. I believe it goes retrograde on the 14th. And with this in Aquarius for you, that is, um, doing some quick math here, that is your 10th house, right? That's what's fun about doing these readings. A lot of this really is just off the cuff and like me kind of visualizing your chart. Yeah, that's your 10th house. Um, and, and that's really also like how you show up in the world. Um, that's really going to be important. Um, thinking about that, thinking about your long-term goals and, and what you really want to do in this life, what you want to be known for, how you want to show up. Um, so there really is this focus on your purpose as well, especially as we enter more and more into Aquarius season. Um, and there is also this focus on you learning new things, um, maybe t gaining knowledge from spiritual teachers or learning new teachings or concepts, um, with that ninth house activation with all this Capricorn energy that we're in. But honestly, it feels really positive. Um... That's actually a little surprising to me. I'm not going to lie. It feels like the readings have been sort of like heavy for a lot of people. Um, but I, I feel like for you, Taurus, it's like you're kind of just doing your own thing. <laughs> um, and interestingly, just want to pay attention to this wolf, too. This was one of the cards that came out before. It was at the top of the pile when a bunch of other cards came out. And the wolf is the card of like almost this identity struggle. Like, do I belong to the pack or am I a lone wolf? right? Like, where are my people? Who are my people? There, there's kind of a big question there. And actually, for you, Taurus, there is, like, a, a big thing on figuring that out, um, specifically with uh, Jupiter and, and Neptune in Pisces. Jupiter just entered the sign of Pisces, and there, there could be a lucky break for you this year. Um, But yeah, I, I really feel quite, I, I feel really good, honestly, about this month for you. I, I think you're doing what you need to do. I think you're focusing on the causes that make you feel happy as well. And maybe that's also part of like what is unsettling your relationships to the people around you a little bit. But I mean, it's Venus retrograde. It's kind of to be expected, just being honest. Like relationships can be very tense. Uh, there's a lot of pressure that gets put on them. And it's not even necessarily like you're breaking up with someone. It's almost like that pressure is there and it's something that's going to kind of help you figure out if that's really a connection that's working for you. Maybe that does lead to a breakup, but I, I, I don't get the sense of like major heartache. I actually think that already would have happened, to be honest. Um, I, I feel like you're actually going to be finding your people by embracing who you are. And pay attention to the moon. That's what I'm getting with Wolf as well. We have the new moon in your ninth house in Capricorn on the second. And this new moon is actually just supercharging any New Year's resolutions or any intentions that we have set for this year. It's really helping us um, create with that, uh, really dedicate to the things that we want to have happen. And then with this Cancer, um, with this Cancer, uh, sorry, with the Cancer full moon, this Mercury retrograde is, like, already affecting me. I'm a Virgo, so, like, I get super affected whenever Mercury goes retrograde, whatever it's doing. Mercury is actually my chart-dominant planet. Um, with this influence affecting you, this full moon influence, where is that for you? That's in your third house of communication, your mind. Right. Um, don't know why I had to do the arithmetic there. I, I feel like there really is this change in the way that you express yourself and speak to other people. Really paying attention to those lunar cycles, I, I think, is going to be really, really important. And maybe you're doing some sort of moon magic as well. I just make that connection with wolf and the moon, and that's something that just keeps popping up. Um, paying attention. If you're trying to s uh, travel this year, really set that intention now at the beginning of January while the new moon is still in Capricorn or while we're in the wake of that influence for the next couple of weeks. And then um, 
you know, with the way you're expressing yourself, that's going to change. And you're, you're going to have a bit of a perspective shift, I think. We all are, especially with the nodes shifting as well. Um, and the nodes are affected by the moon. The, the nodes are basically where the sun and um, the moon line up. It's where the eclipses occur. So this nodal shift with the wolf is really, really significant to you. It's focusing on you. And those are all the messages that I have for you now, Taurus. I do hope that this was helpful. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. If this video didn't quite resonate or you'd like greater clarity, you're also welcome to check the videos for your moon or rising sign. Um, I do have all of my links in the description box down below if you'd like a personal reading or Reiki session with me. Again, all of my services are 15% off using the code NEWYEAR2022. It's on my website, so don't worry about forgetting it. Um, I do also have a, a link for a friend who's doing crowdfunding for a Enneagram Wisdom deck. She's working on an Oracle deck based off the Enneagram, which is actually a great self-development tool. And I think for you in specific, Taurus, learning about the Enneagram would actually be really, really helpful this year because the Enneagram helps us figure out what motivates us, what our basic drives and fears are, and how we can grow into who we are meant to be. I actually used to be really, really into the Enneagram, so if you're not familiar, that could be a fun rabbit hole to get into, especially with all this focus on you right now. Um, and my friend Angela would definitely appreciate any support you could give her. I'd be really, really excited to see this deck come out. So definitely give her a shout out too. Um, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care and have a happy January.